Hello and welcome to Recognition. This month marks my one year anniversary of starting the development of my wholesome 3D real-time strategy game called World Turtles. I thought I'd take a look back at where I started and how far I've progressed and I'd love for you to take that trip with me. It was December of 2019 when I stumbled upon Catlike Coding's brilliant hex map tutorial series. Since February of that year, I'd been playing around with the myriad of interconnected tabs, systems and add-on packages in Unity. But all I'd really developed in the 10 months were the following. A cabin scene with automated birds, some integrated weather effects and a horse pulling a cart using joints and physics. A nifty little partial solar system allowing me to visualize the size, location and movement of the Earth, Moon and Sun in relation to one another. And the starting phases of a very basic user interface only little turn based minigame allowing me to earn resources and spend it on buildings and upgrades for about 25 turns before everything was built. Basically I was still learning where to find certain windows and editor tabs in Unity and was still very new to C Sharp, but I have been coding in two or three other languages as part of my day job for years, so when I saw Catlike Coding's tutorials, I instantly knew that I could one day develop a decent game using it as the starting point. As Jasper himself says where he gives anyone the green light to use his foundation, his project was just a starting point, and many many hours of development would still be needed to get it anywhere close to a publishable game. I feel I've covered the first many in the last 12 months. I hope to cover the second many in the next 12. While Catlike Coding's tutorial is only a starting point, it's a pretty fine one. After working through it, I was left with randomly generated maps with different textured terrain types with varying elevations. Prototype units that could walk from hex to hex smoothly, exploring the map as they went. A system for rivers, roads and walls, as well as placing features like trees, farms and urban areas on the map. And finally, very importantly, a well-structured set of classes, calculations, methods and tools to take on the road ahead. By the way, I cover this entire journey in my video series, which you can find in the top right or under my playlists. So please watch some of them if their topics is of interest to you. It wasn't long before I started adding onto this splendid foundation. And let's have a quick look at the most influential things I've contributed up to now. I added resource gatherers and the chains of tasks required for them to perform their duties, seeking out resources, harvesting them and carrying them back to their cabins. I also allowed different unit types and randomized units based on combinations of different characteristics. I implemented a system that queues tasks as they become required and allocates them to appropriate units as the units become idle after performing previous tasks. A big part of this task allocation relies heavily on pathfinding, which I expanded on heavily. I changed the basic unit of the map from a hex to the six triangular segments of the hex plus a segment for the center. This has been very influential in terms of the functionality it caters for due to the larger degree of granularity the segment based map affords me. However, since the steps in the path are now irregular in terms of both length and direction, I had to redesign the unit movement from one step taking a fixed amount of time to complete and starting and ending in fixed directions to a fixed physical distance being traveled in a fixed amount of time, regardless of how many steps and which of many possible directions that distance included. This meant I required Bezier curves of two orders higher than the original movement applied. I also expanded on the pathfinding to cater for many different scenarios, for example being biased towards or away from certain areas. Collision avoidance allows the units to identify and sidestep each other and other obstacles in their paths in real time. Next, I wanted the mechanics of World Turtles to be linked to the actual terrain itself throughout the gameplay. The first step in this journey has to do with how buildings are placed on the map. Most buildings occupy more than a single hex, mostly one ring or two rings around the center hex. 
Requiring such large plots of completely flat land to place buildings on would lead to very dull, featureless maps. So my buildings consist of a few separate paths on different hexes within the floor plan. Some paths are situated on more than one hex, while others take up only one hex of space. It is the work of the builders to first flatten the terrain enough to allow the building to be constructed on it. For each floor plan, you can specify the maximum elevation differences allowed between any combination or string of hexes in the floor plan. A recursive methodology then tests the elevation differences of the intended location of the building, comparing it to the levels the floor plan requires. It determines the optimal rotation of the building to minimize the amount of digging and leveling the builders need to perform before the building can be constructed on the location. So, choosing locations that are more suited to the floor plan allows faster construction, while less desirable profiles can still be built upon but requires more effort. This also means that my terrain meshes need to be constantly re-triangulated as the terrain is changed. Each group of 8x8 hexes are placed in a separate chunk of terrain, and the entire chunk needs to be re-triangulated if any of its hexes change elevation. All this pathfinding and retriangulation is quite taxing on the CPU, so threading was required to achieve any kind of stable and decently high frame rate. I spent a long time optimizing and tinkering with this and eventually had the terrain retriangulation running on one thread, the main pathfinding running on another thread, and the exploration and fog of war calculations, which are deceptively complex, on yet another thread freeing up the main thread for more of the tasks that cannot be delegated to parallel threads. I also created different levels of detail for the terrain triangulation, allowing fewer triangles to be used when viewed from afar. I currently achieve in excess of 60 frames per second when running very large maps on Ultra HD resolution, and in excess of 90 frames per second on Full HD resolution. I needed to implement a rather cool feature to allow my world, which is situated on the back of a turtle, to appear to bob and glide through space as the turtle moves. For various calculations and performance reasons, my map actually needs to be static, so I devised a system that moves and rotates everything around the turtle and its map, including the camera itself, in such a way that it looks like the surroundings are static and the turtle moves. Another required feature is the minimap. I needed something performant that would not eat away at the frame rate, and by mirroring the terrain triangulation in considerably fewer triangles on a different layer, with a different camera mapping that view to a texture, I managed to create the start of a good looking minimap, for the cost of a frame or two per second. But it still needs to display a lot more information eventually. Next, I wanted the construction of buildings to be progressive, not just plopping completed buildings down on the map. This was achieved by creating different models in progressive levels of completeness and combining it with a task queuing system to loop through these models as building tasks were completed. The information indicating where exactly builders should stand and build is also contained within the models and translated into tasks as the model gets ordered. As of now, the models also contain raw resources, which gradually decrease as the buildings progress, and a system of tiny flags indicating where buildings have been ordered, to help the player navigate through the terrain. Let's end off with a combination of building types and user interface, since that's what I've been working on most lately. I've already got most of the functionality working for the following unit types. Scouts seek out unexplored areas to explore. Builders construct new buildings and will later also build roads. Dwellings need to be built for idle units that want to join your empire, as well as for future, higher tier unit types that will not stay in the buildings they work in. Woodcutters can chop trees and plant saplings, which grow over time. Stonemasons can gather stone and also shards, which can be used for new basic tools. Farmers can plant and harvest crops. Research hubs allow units to discuss their work and improve their knowledge and skills. Leisure hubs allow units to take a break, have some downtime and keep themselves happy. The priorities of these tasks can be set in the building UI panel, which also indicates the upgrade progress of each building. Units can level up when all the upgrade requirements have been met and a new set of more advanced tools have been produced for them by the Tinkerer, with metal extracted by the Alchemist. 
both of which I still need to implement. Viewports can also be used to keep an eye on certain units or points of interest on the map. These can be resized and moved around, used to center the map on the view, and you can even zoom and move around the view in the viewport itself. Both the building UI and the construction menu UI utilize a hex grid configuration of icons. The panels are enlarged here to show the functionality, but the size, background and other tweaks remain to be considered. For the construction menu, I utilize two rings of hexes around the center. This allows for six different groups of buildings, of which only three are currently utilized, with up to five different buildings in each group. As soon as you click on a group, the configuration changes to display the icons under that group. I feel this design fits in well with the theme of the game and is flexible enough to ensure planned and currently unplanned developments would be catered for. And that's where we are after one year. I've thoroughly enjoyed learning and implementing so much this last year, and I hope I can have a decent playable demo including the first tier of buildings discussed here, ready for the June 2021 Steam Games Festival, which is my main aim at the moment. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. I also have a subreddit which you can find in the about section if you'd like to follow along, and a Patreon page if you're really inspired to contribute. During the last few weeks, I've really started feeling that World Turtles is looking and feeling more and more like a game that will eventually be published, given I keep working on the required functionality. And I absolutely intend to. Goodbye!